The origin of Santiago de Compostela is strongly linked to the discovery of the remains of the Apostle, something which led to this place, bathed by the rivers Sar and Sarella to become in the Middle Ages, a goal to be reached by pilgrims and the faithful from all over Europe. Prior to the discovery, the area where the historic city is now situated was once known as Mount Breton. It seems that it was once home to a Roman villa a belief that provoked archaeological excavations. This settlement remained until the 7th century. Six centuries earlier and, next to the enclave, a mausoleum was also established, where, according to legend, the disciples of Santiago, Theodore and Athanasius buried his remains. Christian and oral tradition claim that the apostle, when alive, had preached in the famous Hispanic Finisterre, end of the world, and, after returning to Palestine and being beheaded, his followers wanted to bring his body to this location, the farthest place where he preached. The Remains of Street James The history jumps forward to the 9th century when the hermit Paiu saw, in an unknown year, at some point between 813 and the 830, how some lights, or stars, lit up the ruins of an ancient necropolis. The hermit reported his finding to Theodomir the bishop from the neighboring area Flavia, who examined and identified the remains of the tombs as being of the apostle. He communicated this to the monarch of the kingdom of Asturias and Galician, Alfonso II. On learning of this discovery, the king did not hesitate to undertake the Camino to Santiago, thus figuring in history as the first ever pilgrim and laying down the foundation for the route later known as Camino Primitivo, Primitive Way. On arriving to Compostela he founded, on the sacred spot, the first church and ordered for a monastery to be constructed to house the monks responsible for guarding the temple and the remains of the apostle. This is the monastery of San Paiu, which still remains today in the vicinity of the cathedral. It is currently inhabited by nuns. For many historians, it was in the 12th century, that the city underwent its most glorious moment in the history. The French way attracted thousands of pilgrims, with the added fuel of the publication of the Codex Calixtino, the first pilgrimage guide to Santiago. The cathedral progressed steadily and its construction involved some of the best builders and architects of that time, such as Maestro Matteo, the creator of the sublime portico of glory a fine masterpiece of Romanesque architecture. The ancient university is founded. After the consecration of the cathedral in 1211, the golden age of the pilgrimage to Compostela took place, a boom of walkers and, religious fervent changed the future of the city. Outside the historic center, on the other side of the fortified walls, several convents of various orders, such as Santa Clara and Bilvis, helped the city to expand further. In the surroundings of the temple several guilds were established and workers' lives revolved around providing services to the walkers. The Concaros, selling scallop shells to walkers as physical proof that they had completed the pilgrimage is just one example. On every street commercial trades were flourishing, including the production of metal bowls and silversmiths, in square praza of Praterias, all of which boosted further life into Compostela in the Middle Ages. After the 14th and 15th century, and following a rather poor economic period for the ecclesiastical powers of Santiago, in 1495 the city saw the creation of another of great landmark when the notary of Compostela, with the support of the abbot of San Martin Pinario set up a school for the poor known as the School of Grammar, seat of the subsequent university. The academic university center, one of the oldest in the world, was driven mainly by the Archbishop Alonso de Fonseca and Today is still one of the great pillars on which life pivots in Compostela. In the 16th century Santiago continued its urban development and, it was during these years that the majority of buildings surrounding the cathedral were erected. Among them the former Hospital Real, now the Hostel dos Reis Católicos, commissioned by monarchs Fernando and Isabella to assist and care for pilgrims. In the 17th century, and even though the pace of pilgrimages had slowed down, the city was still alive and, lived its greatest aesthetic revolution. The Vodou of Santiago, 
an unfair medieval tax which numerous Christian cities of Spain were forced to pay to the Archbishop of Compostela as compensation for the critical help provided by the Apostle in the Battle of Clavijo which was of great importance for the course of the Reconquista, and served to finance many of the great construction works of this century, the tax remained in force until the 19th century. In the cathedral the altar was transformed, the holy door was opened and, more importantly the temple was completed with its great baroque facade leading onto Obrado Euro Square, the most photographed picture of the basilica. Next to the temple, other squares and noble houses were constructed in a defined formation, as has occurred in Obradorio Square with the construction of Pazzo de Raxoy, the home of the present council. The Fall and Rise of Pilgrimages after decades of religious and political change, during which the mitre of Compostela lost power and influence and, the pilgrimage to Santiago entered a progressive decline, an important discovery was made to reverse the trend. In 1879 they rediscovered, the relics of the apostle in the cathedral. They had been lost since the 16th century, after being hidden for fear that English privateers might take them. A search was conducted and bones were located in the current chapel of Magdalena. The Pope of Leon XIII confirmed their authenticity just five years later following a study undertaken to calculate the number of walkers to Santiago. Throughout the 20th century, Compostela, a name that derives from Field of Stars, the stars that illuminated the tomb of the Apostle, was confirmed as an important cultural center, spiritually, academically and politically and the Camino de Santiago rises again. This in turn gave way to a decisive event for the town and, in the late 80s the city was elected to be the host of the Sner de Galicia, Galician government, and, for regional institutions, thus converting the city into the political and administrative capital of the region. Santiago experimented and lived, from this period a strong momentum, reinforced by a revival of the Camino. In recent decades, the city has been awarded several accolades most notably in 1985 it was designated as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. Among its many strengths it was renowned and, still is, for its urban beauty, monumental integrity and spiritual significance as apostolic sanctuary.